Hello everyone, today I am going to be showing you how to make a double line graph in Excel. Now, sometimes this can be as easy as one step and you are done, but I'm going to go through and kind of show you some things that you can do to customize your graph, whether it doesn't come out the way you want it to, or you just want to add some information or some things to it. So here for you, I have some sample data of inches of snowfall over two different seasons. Just, you know, some random data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by highlighting the data. Then I'm going to click on the Insert tab. And over here in the center, you see Charts. Now you have two options. One, you can do recommended charts and kind of go through all the different charts they recommend for you. And then you can also just go to All Charts. So you can say specifically, I want a line chart. The reason why I like doing it like this is because you get a quick preview of what it's going to look like. So I can see, okay, that's what my graph would look like if I did it this way. Let's see, what's this stacked line chart? Okay, maybe a little different, not loving that one. You know, you can see 100% stacked line chart and, you know, various different things depending on what it is you're looking for. The other option you can do is to go over here. If I know specifically I want a line chart, I can go ahead and click on the drop down right here. Now, once again, you do get these previews, but a lot of times they're kind of hidden back there. So they're not always, you know, the best ones. But okay, I'm going to choose this one that says line graph with markers. Now, first thing I want to do is just kind of move this. A little bit and actually what I'll do just to make it easier for you I'm just gonna try to make it a little bit bigger so oh, okay not that much bigger so that we can uh, see it and you'll notice that here I'm on this tab right here this is chart design so it gives me some options here changing colors elements selecting data I can even decide hey you know what I don't want that chart type I want to change it to something else all of these things are options here. So you'll notice that right down here, it automatically labeled my um, lines right here. It doesn't always do that. So you might have to go in if it's not there. This is usually something called, um, where is it? There we go, the legend. So right now I have the legend here at the bottom. I can move it to the left, to the top, to the right, or I can get rid of it altogether. I kind of like it at the bottom, so I'm going to leave it there. I think one thing you always want to do is to change your chart title. So what? here's what a lot of people do. Let me, see, let me click out of it. They click on it. They click delete thinking they're going to delete the text. And what they actually do is delete the chart title themselves, itself rather. So if that does happen, you can go back here to add chart element. And then you can go back to chart title and just, you know, pick whichever one you want. And then what you should do is double click into it and then you can say you know snowfall by month yeah there you go let's see so notice that now i did this and i've lost all those tools at the top if that happens all you need to do is click on the chart and then if you go back to chart design it'll be there i would like to put a, a label on this axis right here so that my viewers know what it is like if someone's looking at this graph so I'm going to use chart title and then I'm going to go axis title so you can see there's an axis title for the horizontal which I don't really I don't feel like I need that because I think months are pretty self-explanatory so I'm going to just put in the primary vertical you can put them both in and I am going to put that this is amount in inches so that it's clear what these measurements represent. Let me just go through some other things you can, you know, uh, like I did chart title, we did that. If I want to put data labels on, so if I want to, you can see I'm actually adding this, the actual numbers in there. You could, it's up to you. Sometimes it can get a little crazy. You can add in a data table at the bottom. So I know you might be saying, oh, but the table is behind it. But if you're moving this graph someplace else, maybe you want this data table there. Error bars are not something that you would use for this. This is more, um, you know, if you were doing something that could have more statistics. I mean, there's these are actual measurements, so we don't need error bars. You can change how the it shows up. So whether or not 
you want various grid lines behind it. We went over the legend. These are the lines, so you can have it just go up and down in between these. Again, a trend line. So if you're looking, you want to see like a general trend here. So I would say, okay, I want the trend for the, you know, 2020, 2021 year. I mean, again, for this data, I don't think that's necessary, but that is how you would do that. So one of the other things I want to talk about are these data points right here. So you have the ability to, you know, kind of change colors, change it up. There's a whole bunch of different things here for you to kind of play around with things. But when I click here, you notice I get these choices over on the side. This is a quick way to add the chart elements that we were doing up top. This is to change the styles and the colors. So kind of what I was doing once again up top. But this one is what I want right here, the values. So I can specifically edit these values right here if I needed to say, oh, you know what, I highlighted the wrong thing. Or sometimes if the names are not showing up how you want them to, I can, you know, get rid of that. I can add that back in, different things there. Um, and it's telling me, I was able to tell it that column A is this series. I could have, I could say none. Let me apply that so you can see what happens. And it just calls them series one, series two. So this is something that happens a lot. Sometimes it just gets called series one, series two. So a lot of times people will try to click on it to think that they can edit it that way. And then they'll get frustrated and they'll say, but I, you know, how can I change the, the words that are there? So sometimes what I can do is I can click here on the filters and then I can go down to select data. And then you can see here and I can say, okay, look, here's series one. I want to rename it. So I'm going to click edit. And then maybe, you know, again, let's say it's not this. Let's say I want to say that this is the data for maybe these are, um, instead of being different years, maybe these are different cities. So maybe this is Denver. So I'm just going to type in Denver. Notice it put it there. And then because I had this information here, it automatically pulled that in. But I can go ahead and edit it. And maybe this is Bowler. Again totally making these things up here. Um, so you, you really do have a lot of editing. Let's say for some reason you wanted to switch the rows and the columns. Not loving that view, but that's what that does. So these are just kind of some things you can do with graphs in Excel. I would love for you to ask me some specific questions as to something that you are trying to do, and then I can show you a whole video just answering your question. But I hope that this has helped. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what else I can do to help you out. And I hope that you have a great and techie day. Bye.